between Mike James having a huge week last week for Louisville basketball to a big-time 2024 quarterback offer going out, and then finally a Virginia offensive line transfer coming to the University of Louisville. There's a lot of stuff to talk about on today's episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast, so let's get right on into it. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everyone? Welcome in to another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. For those who don't know me, I serve as a credential media member for Cardinal Sports Zone. also do some PA announcing work for the university in various sports i want to take this time to say thank you all for making us your first listen of the day and just a reminder that the show is free on all streaming services five days a week your team every day a lot of different stuff to talk about on today's episode of the show we're going to begin by talking about louisville basketball's mike james being named the acc rookie of the week we'll also talk about the football program uh, sending out a big 2024 quarterback offer to Jake Merklinger. And we'll talk about why he should be one of the top priorities in terms of Flyville 24 quarterback recruiting. And then to wrap the show up, we'll talk about Virginia offensive line transfer John Paul Flores transferring to the University of Louisville for next season. Uh, we'll begin on the basketball side of things. Louisville, not necessarily a great week, right? Um more losses, granted, pretty close games. Um, a single possession loss to Syracuse earlier in the week. And then on the weekend, um, the Cardinals went down big to Wake Forest and tried to mount a second half comeback, but came up just a little bit short. However, that should not take away from what we saw from Louisville redshirt freshman Mike James. The... Um, like I said, the redshirt freshman won ACC Rookie of the Week after averaging 21.5 points per game, 6 rebounds, and 1.5 steals per contests over the two matchups against Syracuse and against Wake Forest. For the season, he's only averaging 8.8 points per game, 3.4 rebounds, 0.9 assists, while shooting the ball 47.5%. From the field, you look at the past two games, field goal percentage shot over 56% in both the matchups against Syracuse and Wake Forest from the three point line Um, for the season. He actually has been pretty solid, uh, 41%. However, small sample sizes, Uh, he only averages just under three uh, perimeter shots per game Uh, this time. Five for nine against Wake Forest, four for six against Syracuse. So overall, um, you know, Mike James coming off of a season-ending Achilles injury before the season even started last year, now in January of the following season, is starting to look like the player that a lot of fans thought Mike James could be. Now, granted, he's still relatively young in terms of college eligibility, right? I mean, he's a redshirt freshman. And then you also look at the notion that he didn't even play last season. So basically, it's his true freshman season because, you know, he was sidelined for a good amount of time with an Achilles injury. And also, that's one of the tougher injuries to kind of bounce back from. Uh, You see a lot of players that aren't able to regain their athleticism or their bounce or their speed, agility, with an injury that is as critical and crucial as an Achilles tear. Thankfully, it seems like Mike James has retained a lot of, if not all of that athleticism from pre-injury play. So um, just great basketball that we've seen from him. And not just in the scoring department. Obviously, you look at what he's been able to do in the scoring department, um, you know, averaging 21 and a half points. And I think that that's big for Louisville moving forward. Obviously, this season, people will look at it as a lost cause. Look, I get it. Um, the Cardinals are not necessarily in a good spot. Uh, only two wins on the season. And we are approaching, you know, the middle of January. So, um it's not like Louisville is going to make a run for the NCAA tournament or anything like that. Uh, but I think that you can still look at and acknowledge some of the positives that you're seeing throughout the season, right? Um, 
one thing is I like what I'm seeing from Mike James. Um, one of the issues I think offensively for the Cardinals this season is that sort of like last season, we're having trouble determining what the offensive identity of this team is. Um, I think the lack of point guard play outside of L. Ellis, um, I think that the Cardinals are struggling to create offense. You see that in the turnover or the, or the assist to turnover ratio. Well, look at the game against Wake Forest on Saturday. The Cardinals started out really, really slow. Wake Forest got out to, I think, a 22-point lead early on, early on in the second half. And a lot of that can be contributed to to the Cardinals being careless with the basketball, unforced errors, basically a lot of turnovers. And that's been sort of this team's MO. Um, it has been, you know, not necessarily creating a lot of offense for, you know, teammates, but turning the ball over way more than desired. And that definitely shows. I said on a show uh, probably about a couple of weeks ago that I think the most alarming statistic that I've seen and the most, um, you know, telling statistic as it relates to the struggles of this team is that assist to turnover ratio because the team is not creating solid looks and they're also um, not necessarily, you know, doing a good job of taking care of the, of the basketball. Now there is uh, another argument to be made is that the Cardinals just haven't been making shots. Louisville doesn't have those guys on the perimeter that do well, you know, in terms of perimeter shooting. L. Ellis, I think, is a phenomenal three-point shooter. Jalen Withers has the opportunity to step out and knock down that deep ball. Um, you know, other players as well. I think Kamari Lance has that potential. But overall, I just think that the Cardinals have pretty much struggled shooting behind the arc. And I think that that really has sort of – been a key issue when it comes to this offensive, um, you know, the offensive uh, identity and things like that. They're shooting about 32% from the three-point line. Um, you look at the guys that are shooting the ball over 33%. L. Ellis is at 32.7%, but with his usage, I think that that can get a little overlooked. Mike James, 41% from three. Jalen Withers, three or 38.6%. Um, outside of that, that's the only player that's shooting above 33%. And like we said, uh, with Withers and uh, Mike James, it's more so not necessarily taking a lot of perimeter shots um, as opposed to volume shooting and shooting at a high level, but they're still knocking it down at a pretty solid clip. But I think that I was kind of worried with players like um, – you know, Mike James, Devin Ree, Kamari Lance, some of the younger players in this system that don't have a lot of uh, collegiate basketball experience because of the lack of the offensive identity on the court. It's nice to see Mike James uh, essentially doing it all for the Cardinals. Uh, Mike has said outside of scoring, he's doing a good job of rebounding the basketball. He's doing a good job of facilitating the ball. On-ball defense has been solid. The effort's been there. He's been extremely, extremely, um, you know, exciting to watch over the past couple of games. Even when he wasn't scoring all that much uh, the week prior, I think that he was making impacts um, beyond the score sheet. And I th always thought that that was going to be the player that Mike James turned out to be. Maybe he didn't average 20 points per game, but he was going to be a player that had the intangibles of, you know, being a hustle guy, the three and D plays extremely solid defense, both on ball and um, from a, uh, overall cohesiveness, you know, level on the defensive end, solid rebounder, just the guy that does everything um, that may not necessarily be a 20 points per game score, but I think that we've seen the potential now. We see the potential in the past two games that, you know, if the three-point shot is falling, which I think he's had solid shot selection, he's utilizing his, um, you know, athleticism to his advantage at getting to the rack, but – we're starting to see it. Perimeter shooting has been solid. One of the reasons, one of the main reasons why Louisville was able to mount a comeback against Wake Forest was because Mike James absolutely took the Louisville offense to the next level. If he can start to consistently put out that effort, I'm not saying he has to score 20 points per game from here on out, but if he can start, you know, filling in some of those scoring responsibilities, maybe Louisville can steal a win here and there and take some of that scoring responsibility from L. Ellis. So, 
We'll continue to talk uh, Louisville basketball as the weeks go on. Hopefully we start to see Mike James consistently do this on a nightly basis. Uh, But for the rest of the show, we're going to talk about the football side of things. Um, Some interesting things happening both um, in recruiting and in the transfer portal. We'll begin with the uh, recruiting side of things. The Cardinals offered or re-offered 2024 a highly rated prospect, Jake Merklinger. We're going to talk about why he should be one of the top prospects and priorities on the Flyville 24 board here in just a second after we talk about our friends over at Built Bar. Looking for a delicious treat but don't want a, all of the fat and calories? Then you got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, and I know my goal is to eat a little healthier this year. If you're like me when you want to eat healthier but don't want to compromise taste, then, man, I've got just the thing for you. You've got to try Built. With Built Healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're delicious, and you won't think they're good for you. But seriously, the benefits are there. You can scroll down to the macros chart at Built.com and check out all of the healthy benefits. Even though they're covered in 100% real chocolate, it has the healthy benefits of a protein bar. I don't know how they do it, but honestly, they taste like candy bars while maintaining those amazing micros. You don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built Bars at Built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. It's changing the game. Go to your wall, to your local, your local Walmart or Sam's Club to check those out and get a box of Built Bars for yourself. Um, you can get a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter and churro that are out now. You can thank me later. Get them now while they're available. Built Bar is the way to go. Hey, Cardinal fans, thanks again for making Locked On the Louisville your first to listen every day. Make sure you check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball all in one place. Plus, hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Heading right on along into the second segment of the show, Jake Merklinger was just re-offered by the University of Louisville on Monday evening. The Cardinals and Jeff Brom offering the Savannah, Georgia native, who is ranked as the 81st best prospect in the country, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite, the 7th best quarterback, and the 16th best prospect in the state of Georgia. Has a very impressive offer list so far. Um, obviously you have Louisville, but, um, you look down the list, Tennessee, Wake Forest, Virginia Tech, Pittsburgh, Mississippi, North Carolina, NC State, Mississippi State, Missouri, Michigan, Maryland, Georgia Tech, Florida, Duke, Cincinnati, Boston College, Auburn, so on and so forth. Um, I think that Merklinger is a prospect that is going to continue to pick up some big time offers as he goes throughout fall camp in the or fall camp uh, AAU circuits or not even AAU circuits. It's not in football, but the the camps in the summer, whatever they're called, you, you get what I'm saying. I think as he goes into his senior year, you're going to see um, you know his offer sheets start to rise a little bit as the blue blood traditional programs start to focus more and more. On the 2024 recruiting side of things, Merklinger, 6'2 and a half, 195 pounds, um, plays for Calvary Day School in the Savannah area, multiple sport athlete that also plays basketball and lacrosse. Baseball uh, was in his youth as well. Um, 2021, he was the Region 3A uh, private offensive player of the year, completed over 70% of his passes, uh, 2,500 yards, 25 touchdowns to go with eight interceptions, also ran for 300 yards and 11 more while averaging 6.3 yards per carry. That was as a sophomore. Those statistics um, a little better as a junior. And I think that he possesses all of the qualities that you're looking for in a Jeff Brom offense. Uh, You know, being more of a dual threat, we've seen, um, you know, Jeff Brom and company utilize quarterbacks ability to get out of the pocket and move. Um, you, you saw it at Purdue. I believe he made a comment that he's looking for that at this level as well. Jake Plummer, maybe not necessarily the most mobile quarterback, but he can move if need be. Uh, don't let the negative rushing yards fool you. Those are sack yardage. You know, those are sack yards that have kind of tainted those, um, you know, rushing numbers. Although 
that's neither here nor there. Jake Plummer, I wouldn't consider a dual threat quarterback, but Pierce Clarkson is. Um, Jake Merklinger, I would probably consider to be a pro style quarterback, but at the same time, you know, he does have that that possibility to get out and run, like I said, over 10 rushing touchdowns as a sophomore. So, you know, you have that portion of Jeff Brom's offense that utilizes the read option. You watch the film on Merklinger, and what does he do? He exercises or he you know he exercises good feel in the pocket he's very very solid when it comes to getting out of the pocket and throwing on the run and I think the main thing that um is probably encouraging to me is his touch on the deep passing does a great job of putting the ball with pinpoint accuracy down the field uh completing nearly 70 percent of his passes as a sophomore in a solid area uh, you know, playing in the state of Georgia, which is a solid area. I saw a statistic today, or it wasn't even a statistic. It was a tidbit that since 2015, at least one of the starting quarterbacks in the national championship game was from the state of Georgia. Granted, did, some of those were Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields. So I'm not saying that Merklinger is going to be one of those. I'm not saying that he's going to be as good as Stetson Bennett either. I just think it's pretty interesting, you know, that um, that tidbit because it makes you just wonder. Um, I, but I do think it sheds light on the state of Georgia being very, very solid in terms of, you know, uh, you know, recruiting talent and things of that nature. Merklinger, like I said, that dual threat possibility, also the deep passing I think that he's a guy that is also solid at, you know, short passing accuracy. Accuracy all throughout the three levels of the passing, though, the short, the intermediate, and, you know, the deep passing. So, um, granted, top 100 prospects. So, I think the ranking pretty much speaks for itself here. I think you could probably say, yeah, Dalton Shore, a top 100 prospect, should be at the top of the priority list for Jeff Brom and company in Flyville 24. Well, duh. But I, I think that, you know, him bringing that dual threat um, – you know, possibility to the table, the, you know, highlighted accuracy is big time as well. And he's a competitor. You watch him play and he's not scared to take a hit, does a good job of just absolutely fighting for yards. And I'm not saying other guys don't, but, um, you know, reminds me of like Jack Plummer in the sense that Plummer is a guy that took a lot of hits last year at California, but immediately he got back up and competed. And I kind of got those same vibes from watching uh, Jake Merklinger. And, um, and also I think that his ability to operate in the read option and, and being able to, you know, utilize the RPO situations kind of reminds me a little bit of Pierce Clarkson as well. And there's a lot of those same uh, tendencies of, you know, definitely being, able to utilize the middle of the field and not, you know, worrying about it either and, and doing it with confidence. And um, I think Merklinger would be a very, very solid addition. Granted, uh, you can't really get too far into it right now. Obviously, it was just an offer, but I'm just saying he should be one of the biggest priorities, in my opinion. Obviously, I'm not a coach or anything, but highly rated guy from a very, very solid um, part of the country when it comes to recruiting talent so far in, or so, so – I, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. So on and so forth. I, I say it all the time. That's my go-to saying, and I absolutely forgot what I was saying. Um, but like I said, in the Georgia area, going to be tough to win out in this recruitment. I think the first thing like a prospect, in my opinion, um, or for a prospect, in my opinion, is to go out and get him to come on a visit, um, You know, make a visit to the program, um, and, and be able to go from there. Um, ultimately, I think that this would be a, a big addition. Yes, you should be recruiting highly rated guys in the 2024 class, regardless if Pierce Clarkson is the you know future at quarterback or not, because that's how top that's how top uh, programs recruit the quarterback position. They like to bring in a top quarterback in pretty much every single class. That's how you have a situation where if your starting quarterback goes down, you are not um, you know in a bad position. But uh, Jake Merklinger. From the Savannah area, very, very solid player, very accurate downfield, does a great job of utilizing his legs when need be, um, solid around the goal line, um, just overall uh, you know, a guy that seems like he has 
all of the, you know, has the talent, has the um, you know, pocket presence, the feel for the pocket, the ability to get out and throw on the run and still be accurate. Um, that would be huge for the University of Louisville. Um, so we'll see how that recruitment kind of unfolds. But for the remainder of the show, we'll talk about uh, Virginia offensive lineman John Paul Flores transferring to the Louisville program um just a couple days ago we'll do that here in just a second uh, before we do that i want to say thank you all again for making us your first listen of the day uh just a programming note i will once again be out of town um starting this afternoon so there will be no episode wednesday nor thursday that's why i recorded two episodes for monday but once i get back on uh friday there will be a Friday episode and possibly a Saturday episode, potentially. Um, I'm sorry for the inconsistency when it comes to uh, content and things of that nature, but uh, my work schedule has really made things a little interesting. But it is what it is. Um, we will make do with what we have and the opportunity in which we have it. So uh, appreciate you all for being patient and uh, following along on the ride. But for the final segment of the show, we'll talk about a Virginia offensive lineman transferring to the Louisville program, John Paul Flores. Um, started his career out at Dartmouth, was a all Ivy League uh, player uh, at Dartmouth before transferring to Virginia this past season. Started the first six games at left guard, played in all 10. Um, uh, but one of the main things that highlighted his short stay in Charlottesville was his uh, versatility. Played almost all of the positions, played a lot of time at the guard position, also played center. Um, so you have a lot of versatility that Jeff Brom and company can work with. There's a clear need for Louisville. Um, I think that this is, is this is a pretty much um, one of those things that don't doesn't need to be explained. People will say, oh, well, Flores was a part of a Virginia offensive line that wasn't necessarily all that great. That is true. Uh, but I think you look at this, Virginia's offensive line was not good at all. Um, but I think he looked solid at times, especially in running situations. Wasn't bad in pass pro either. Uh, but when it's just, you know, one to two good offensive linemen for, uh, you know, uh, for the most part, kind of lackluster offensive line, it's hard to really um, look solid on paper. So um, I think you look at the film, you see, you know, he does a solid job with his hands, um, solid footwork as well for a guy that's 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 uh, 308 pounds or so. Um, solid leverage, um, just a guy that, you know, competes from uh, whistle to whistle. So uh, definitely I like the versatility. There's a couple of different ways that Jeff Rahm and company could look at this. Richard Owens could look to, you know, possibly start him at the guard position at left guard. Obviously the Cardinals have needs at the offensive line. You're replacing Trevor Reed, uh, all conference performer, Caleb Chandler, who's been an anchor for the Cardinals offensive line. Line over the past couple of years, he's gone. Um, you lose Adonis Boone to the NFL draft. You lose Luke Kandra. Uh, so you've got um, some spots open that you can definitely fill. Obviously, Michael Gonzalez is probably projected at left tackle. Um, Brian Hudson at center. And Renato Brown likely at the right tackle position. Um, but I, I think that the guard position is sort of up in the air, right? You wonder if... Um, possibly there's two different ways you can look at this. And I think that, uh, I'm interested to see how this is going to work because of that versatility that Flores has. Could you see a situation to where he starts at one of the guard positions and then, you know, you keep Brian Hudson, um, you keep Brian Hudson on the, um, or at the center position, or could you move Brian Hudson to one of the guard positions and put Flores at center? Regardless, um, I, I think it's a solid problem to have, but he's a guy that looks to play a lot of snaps. At the very least, I think he's going to be in the two deep. Obviously, you're bringing back Austin Collins. Um, Josh Black could be getting some solid run this season along with Austin Collins, or Austin Collins, uh, Aaron Gunn. Um, uh, Isaiah Reed's another guy. Maquette Gway, uh, he's another player. Uh, redshirt freshman that could see some uh, snaps on the offensive line. But this this was a, a need that needed to be filled. The Cardinals needed to bring in at least one more offensive lineman. Um, so we'll see. I think that the versatility there is big. This could be like a Cam DeGeorge type of addition, maybe a guy that doesn't really pop off the page. Obviously, offensive line, you look at it, it's like, eh, 
but it's definitely critical. We talked on uh, yesterday's episode of how the Louisville passing game has gotten, you know, even more scary or even gotten even scarier. But this is all a moot point if you can't protect Jack Plummer and or Pierce Clarkson. So bringing in a guy like Flores, who may not necessarily be the best offensive line in the best offensive lineman in the portal. He's a guy with ACC experience. He's shown that he can succeed at this level, and he slides into a position of need right away. At the very, very least, he is a depth piece. So um, definitely excited. Uh, this is another solid addition for Jeff Brom, and this one has the potential, you look at it, to possibly um, have a lot more return than you know some others, but you don't necessarily see it because it's kind of hard to quantify what offensive linemen do in terms of statistics and things of that sort. So um, we talked about uh, Mike James winning AC or being named ACC rookie of the week. Um, Jake uh, Merklinger being offered, re-offered by the university of Louisville football program and John Paul Flores, Virginia offensive lineman transferring to the Cardinals program. Uh, Like I said, no episodes uh, for the next two days, but we will have an episode starting Friday. So be sure to check out all the previous content. Uh, Hopefully there's some more news to talk about. When that is, we will talk about that here on the next uh, episode of the show. But with that said, everyone, have a great day. Have a great next couple of days. We'll see you back here before you know it.